Let me bring in Alex Antic, Liberal Senator for South Australia. Thanks for joining us, uh, Alex. Can you believe this, that it appears we've had surf lifesavers actually taken off the beach, off patrol, losing their jobs because they're not vaccinated? Yeah, well, thanks, Chris. Look, sadly, I can believe it because we've seen, you know, the better part of 18 months where this is becoming the increasing norm. And, I, and I'm sorry to say that I don't think I've ever been more disappointed in our institutions, in our businesses, and frankly, in many of our political leaders uh, when it comes to taking the lead on this. And, and look, congratulations has to go to you on this, on this one and some of the other media outlets that have reported it, because I think, frankly, the only way that these companies, these businesses and these local governments are going to address this issue is simply by being shamed into it. Clearly, the argument about science hasn't worked. You summed it up in your intro very nicely that, that these treatments, these injections do not stop the transmission of the disease. Uh, by the way, this is something that I put to the Department of Health, Professor Paul Kelly, uh, back 85 days ago, uh, around about the same time as estimates was on uh, in the last cycle. I asked this very question, what is it that you say the department says uh, this does. How much does it stop transmission? Because we're of the understanding it doesn't do anything. I'm still waiting for an answer. So the science doesn't matter in this. This is th Those that are doing this are slipping straight into the slopes of soft totalitarianism. This country has adopted soft totalitarianism far too easily. That should be alarming for everybody. Yeah, there's so much more work, though, to do to fix this up. For instance, there had been so many mandates in place. I hadn't realised that Surf Lifesaving New South Wales had had this vaccine mandate in place for the past year or so. That applied to all its volunteers as well. It's lost people, volunteers from Surf Lifesaving Clubs because of this mandate. Now, thankfully, yes, today, late today, we get this statement. They've now dropped the mandate. So presumably the volunteers can come back. Hopefully people who have lost their professional jobs can come back. But if if Waverley Council, a, a, just another suburban council, if it has a, a, a council-wide vaccine mandate, then of course there must be lots of other councils right across the country who employ everybody from librarians to parking inspectors to office workers. They should not be subjected to a meaningless, superfluous and illiberal vaccine mandate. Yeah, and, and look, in fact, nobody should be. I mean, you picked out some of the more ludicrous examples of that. I've seen examples of groundsmen, groundskeepers uh, in, in schools being mandated out of work. People have been lost to the employment system. The country is much the worse for it. We've actually seen um, police shortages in South Australia, nursing shortages in South Australia. Once again, using the same ludicrous irony that these are people that are actually saving lives out there being mandated out for some anti-science, anti-liberal position. The reality here is that the only way we're going to do this is by naming and shaming those who continue to maintain this anti-science mandate nonsense. And it really gets me wound up. I get multiple emails a day about people that have lost jobs, that have sustained injuries from this therapy, that have to be told to take another one and are being forced out with kids and mortgages in tough economic times. It's time for politics to grow a spine. Well, I've spoken to teachers who can't teach, who lost their jobs as teachers because of a vaccine mandate, and they're still, in New South Wales, teachers who can't teach. At the same time, the teachers' union and the department are screaming for more teachers. Now, that mandate comes off next month, next term, but they have to apply for their jobs. I mean, it's just unnecessary harm in this country. Now, you were disappointed with your own party, your own government when you are in power, not doing enough on this. Who can fix this now? Can state governments do this? Can the federal government do this? We've got to have politicians stamping out these mandates. They are hurting people. They are absolutely hurting people. They're hurting the fabric of our society. And as I said, this country has drifted into the realms of soft totalitarianism far too easily. It's happened because the ruling class have allowed it to happen. So it starts with politics, but it also starts with the media. The media have got to start talking about this. This is like the emperor's new clothes. Everybody on the street is talking about this issue, and yet the media won't talk about it. It's time to blow the whistle on this. This is a nonsense. The shame has to come in. People that are stopping people from coming onto their premises for this, for this uh, nonsense, they've got to be named and shamed. It's as simple as that. that but, and you've just shown today what that does. It works. Well, uh, absolutely. And so if you have any names and uh, names that to come your way, Alex, give us, a, give us a call and come on the program because we've got to keep calling this out. Thanks for joining More us. More than happy. Thanks, Chris. Good on you. Liberal Senator for South Australia, Alex Antic. He's been spot on on this issue all the way along, even when it caused his own party in government to basically isolate him. If you've got examples of these vaccine mandates still hurting people, still being in place with an employer, with a government agency or anything else, contact us, let us know. We've got to call it out. People are actually suffering unnecessarily here.